Hello pen testers this is Puneet from Rapid Safeguard back again with another video and in this video we are going to talk about GraphQL so without wasting your time let's get started so first of all what is GraphQL GraphQL is generally known as a declarative data acquisition language so GraphQL is a query language for API it is used to server side uh, runtime that uses the type based system to execute the queries so what is type based system so type based system is defined by your data graphql is not tied to specific uh, database or storage engine but it relies on your existing code and the data support so graphql is a language specification defined by the facebook to describe the business related data models and provide implementation in multiple programming languages so graphql is a query language for apis and runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data so basically it is used to load data from the server to the client application it is the way to get the data from the api into your application with much more efficient manner than traditional method and services now let's understand requirement of graphql so graphql can be understood uh, as a restful based encapsulation the purpose is to build a service that makes the client easier to use it can be said that GraphQL is a better version of RESTful design. In the past couple of years, REST has become the standard for the designing web API. So it is only a weak standard. So REST API provides some great ideas such as stateless server and structured resource access. However, REST API are too rigid to keep up with the uh, rapidly changing needs of customer who access the API. So GraphQL was developed to cope up with uh, more flexibility and efficiency. it uh, solves many shortcoming and inefficiency experiences by developers when interacting with the rest api to illustrate the main difference between rest and graphql when fetching data from the api so let's understand with an example so you will get the cl uh, clear idea let's consider an example suppose you have a mobile application to display author's name the blog post written by the author and the three most recent blog topics written by him or her in the rest api you will call a three different endpoints so firstly you could be fed the author's information as you can see in the example www.vnm.com/blog/author and give the specific id secondly another rest endpoint is needed to access the blog post and finally you need another endpoint to get the blog topics here clearly see that one api call for the collection and another api call per item for detail and display so in the rest api we send multiple api request to fetch the data from the server now let's think about what happen in a graphql you think of the query to request what you need and you get back precise data that you ask for with a single request again you think of the query to request what you need you get back precise da data that you ask for with a single request we only go for the fields that we need from the server to the client application so as you can check with the previous example where we were searching for the author's information to a specific id the blog post written by the author and the most recent blog uh, topics the requested query in a graphql is organized to the get information precisely the server will uh, the server will provide a json response that uh, has been uh, specifically requested as you can see in the example it uh, it has written the author's name the post composed by them and the previously three topics created by the author that's it so this is how the graphql works now let's understand what is the difference between rest and graphql So a REST API is an architectural concept for the network based software on the other hand GraphQL is a query language a specific and a set of tools that operate over a single endpoint using http RESTful and interface can only return one resource while GraphQL can get multiple resource at the same time as we have seen in the example so uh, the main difference main difference between REST and GraphQL is a rest multiple call required to fetch the specific data from the data set while graphql require only single request to fetch the multiple data now let's talk about features of graphql so firstly just required 
So firstly, just request the required data, no more, no less. For example, account include name, age, gender, email ID, etc. You can get only those data that you want. Secondly, when acquiring multiple resources, only one request is enough. And lastly, increase efficiency and speed of query. Now let's move on to the attacks on GraphQL. Uh, so first of all, information disclosure, also known as an introspection attack, DOS attack, IDOR attack, broken access control attack, GraphQL injection and many more. So we are developing labs on uh, GraphQL attacks on our platform worldmachines.com. So you can visit our worldmachines.com to perform the lab. Now there are tools we can use during the GraphQL pen testing. So first is InQL. So it is Burp extension that you can download from Burp Shoot App Store. Secondly, GraphQL map, GraphQL scanner and many more. So if you know more tools related to GraphQL, please mention in comment section. Now let's uh, uh, move on to the practical so you will get the better understanding. For the practical, visit wallmachines.com. For the lab, visit wallmachines.com where you can practice with real-time vulnerabilities. Uh, and uh, learn about real-time pen testing. So let me show you. So here I am using my credentials to log in in a platform. So go to missions. And where you can see the uh, learning labs, the premium labs, free labs and retired labs. So learning labs are those labs where you can practice with a particular topic and enhance your knowledge let's say uh, uh, you are willing to learn uh, sql injection so we have created a different labs based on sql injection and uh, where you can practice over there uh, premium labs are used to test your uh, public exploit knowledge so rapid safeguard continuously research about cvs and uh, you can see in our youtube channel where we have uploaded more than 70 videos about cvs on premium labs every month you will get new cv lab i would recommend if you want to practice with the real world scenario to try premium labs uh, free labs are based on real time pen testing and chaining of exploits so interesting part over here is none of them have solved this particular challenge i would recommend if you want to try try it out Retire labs are solved by the people and share the POC. You can check it out on our YouTube channel. So these are the four type of different labs. Now, how you can access our labs? So uh, it is required the private connection file uh, that we will share with you uh, to access our labs. And from that file, you can access our labs. So VPN connection file is required to uh, access our labs except uh, free labs. So now let's move on to our GraphQL labs. So our, uh, our basic scenario of our labs is uh, it is an introspection labs. So what is introspection? So what is introspection? So introspection is ability to query which resources are available in current API schema. Given the API via introspection, we can see the queries, types, fields, and directory with supports. So uh, as you can see in the view source, so uh, in the view source, it's uh, uh, in the script tag, especially in script tag, it is something fetching from the world machines. In the post method, you can see the content uh, type application object and uh, the query. So all post uh, is something is there. Let's try to fetch the well machines itself. So try with the well machines. As you can see, the graph IQL has opened. So introspection uh, system define the underscore underscore schema type type kind fields input value enum value and directives which are uh, introspective queries. And every server that provide a, a GraphQL API, we should able to introspect the queries. Let's understand one by one. So first is a schema. The type schema is a, one of the defined that uh, the schema 
the API provides. So the schema uh, returns uh, which type schema has used, the query type, the schema's entry point for the query. So query type is the entry point for the queries. Mutuation type and subscription type, the, uh, it is also part of the uh, entry point of queries. So, and it is related to uh, directive, uh, directives availability. So, in the left part, uh, we ask for the query or we fire the query and in the right part, we will get the result. So, as you can see in the uh, left part, I have typed underscore underscore schema and uh, press control plus enter. So, you will get the information in the graph IQL panel. So, here uh, we are fetching the name information from the schema like uh, which schema has used in the application. So underscore underscore schema field always available on root type of query. So we are going to fire uh, underscore underscore schema type and name. So as you can uh, see the result in the right side. So as you can see in the uh, information uh, in the right hand side. So let's add the description and the fire again. So uh, as you can see in the right hand side, the name and description uh, has added. So you can see the post related stuff like uh, post, post object calculation, post object. Uh, let's uh, dig more. Uh, user object is there. Uh, user object collection uh, means connection. Uh, so these are the schemas uh, that are uh, used in this particular application. So now let's uh, dig more into uh, this and I will pick uh, the user object because in the lab it is uh, a need to find who is admin and the title post of a particular admin. So our second type is uh, underscore underscore type with an object. So it is useful for an object to know what are the fields available. Uh, so let's ask to inter, uh, introspection system about the user object as we have picked uh, from the uh, uh, schema. So uh, we are going to use the type name user object and uh, pass the name. So we got the uh, nothing, but we are going to use field and uh, from the fields we get the information about uh, which fields are used so name and description we are going to pass so as you can see in the right side we got the uid username so these are the fields it is used in the uh, particular uh, user object so uh, from the uh, user object we are trying to fetch the field names so we have fed the successfully fed the field names. Now let's again uh, find out uh, what are the types of uh, query types that has used in the particular application. Now again we are going to use the schema to introspect the query type. So the query type is a special object type that define all, all the top level entry points for the queries that a client execute against the server. So each field of query type define the name and the return type of uh, different entry points. So let's uh, uh, try over here. So again, we are going to use the schema and here the query type and uh, we'll pass the name. So uh, pass the name and execute the query. So in the name itself, it is showing the query. So let's uh, uh, figure out the field names. Uh, so field names and the pass name and description. So as you can see uh, on our entry point is all the all posts and all users. Also, we can uh, see in the script tag. So uh, the entry point is all post. Uh, the title, body, author, and the username. So uh, the our entry point, we have figured out the uh, all post, but we are going to use the our entry point for all users. So because we are uh, uh, we are figuring out who is our admin. So all post 
and uh, the edges so as you can see in the example edges is there so let's say uh, again uh, node uh, and in the node as you can see the field names the, so user id uh, user name is admin uh, is a, a field name we, go, we got and fire the query so as you can see there is two users wall machines and uh, rapid safeguard so rapid safeguard is admin uh, is admin true and wall machines is admin false so our admin is rapid safeguard and now let's figure out the post so uh, add the post and uh, curly braces again uh, same query edge node and uh, the uh, title so we are figuring out the title and uh, user id or author author name and uh, two types over there so username and is admin or not yes is there so we entire from the entire query we get our answer so admin post title we need to figure out so let's query pass the query and as you can see we got the result that uh, two posts from the wall machines uh, user user wall machines and the two one post from the rapid safeguard so let let me show you over here So hello pen testers from the world machines and uh, follow us on Twitter. Please follow us on Twitter. Uh, uh, and uh, our rapid safeguard post, the admin post title is learn GraphQL. So our admin is rapid safeguard and his post title is uh, learn GraphQL. So this is our answer of that particular task. So this is the simple scenario and simple task that we have designed. Uh, to learn about the GraphQL. So guys, we have uh, successfully figured out who is the admin. So Rapid Safeguard is admin and his uh, uh, title, the post title is Learn GraphQL. Now we are going to submit our flag. So with uh, use VNM and uh, use this uh, Learn GraphQL. So submit again, it is required username and password and go to missions, GraphQL, submit VNM, VNM and GraphQL. So let's submit. To successfully post title answer correctly, congratulations, it's completed. So this is all about the uh, flag that we have uh, submitted successfully. So guys, if you are willing to learn with a real time pen testing or want to uh, practice based on the exploits labs, visit wallmachines.com. And if you have any query, my dm is always open and i will mention the uh, email id to contact us uh, i am happy to uh, solve your queries thank you guys thanks for watching this video i hope you like this video if you think it is valuable to you and your infosec friends then share with your infosec friends and subscribe our channel also you can join our community links are in the description box thank you guys thanks for watching